Last year, I was trying to put Linux on two of my Android devices. Today, let's do the opposite. Installing Android system on the laptop. I will be trying out two systems currently available in the market, Blizz and Prime. I started with Blizz. Before downloading, I checked their dock to see if they support NVIDIA. But I found their bootable USB only works for Android 9 and below. And it also requires MBR or legacy boot up. So I didn't go for the live CD ISO right away. Then I found there was a Linux installer link inside their dock. So I went to that GitHub page, download the installer from the release page, and started from my external system. The first thing is, the installer couldn't start on Wayland. The app failed when not able to find the X settings. And when I opened it in X11 GNOME, clicking the file picker icon would crash the app. I tried several times with the same result. Moreover, it required a Blitz ISO file, so I went back to download it. Let's do the drag and drop then. After specifying the OS name and OS version, I found the installer could not see my native NVMe while running in my Fedora on the external SSD. So I rebooted to the native OS, which was Tuxedo OS at the time. On the default X11 desktop shipped with Tuxedo, even though there were still warnings in the terminal, clicking the icon no longer crashed. Next, I chose to install the system to the root home directory which seems to create a folder under my home directory instead of replacing the whole Linux system. After that, he also asked if I wanted to create a grub entry. I chose yes, and then down. I closed the installer and reboot my system. As I expected, Blitz 15 was added to the tuxedo grub menu, but it couldn't go in. It says I need to load the kernel first. There were many people mentioning turning off the secure boot on the internet, which didn't really help because mine was already off. I was wondering if this was caused by the ButterFS I had on Tuxedo OS, while Blitz installer only support ext4. So I spent 30 minutes downloading and installing MX Linux, which, by the way, is to prepare for a future benchmark video. If you want to know which Debian-based distribution performs best for gaming out of the box, please subscribe and ring the bell. Back to our main story. With MX installed, I run the installer again. Since I installed the flagship XFCE version, I had no issue finishing it. This time, the system booted, and the first thing it did was trying to detect the system. After one reboot and more than 30 minute wait, I gave up the idea of using it. I even checked the installation folder where I saw a file called Find Me. I guess that was the file the system was trying to find. I then turned my attention to another system called Prime OS. Compared to Blitz OS, it has much straightforward installation guide which says follow the graphical installer. After putting the ISO file onto the Ventoy and boot, the live CD shows three options. I try the live environment, which automatically reboot the system. I then just went with installation, but it also gave me the same detecting OS message exactly like the Blitz OS. I searched their GitHub page, and it looked like there was a bug related to Ventoy, which got fixed already. So I upgraded my Ventoy on the USB and tried again. Nice. I can enter live environment now. The boot up took me around one minute to see the actual system. I took a sneak peek after the initial language setup. I say it's different and pretty. I see some essential apps such as Play Store, Gallery, Browser, and Clock. Two things caught my attention. First, there are two gaming apps. One is called Gaming Center, and the other one is called Geo Games Plus, which sounds like the famous GeoFiber to me. I guess that is developed by the same Indian company. And the other thing is, there is a terminal emulator called Termux. When I open it, it shows some examples of how to use Package Manager. This is brand new to me, but let me walk you through the installation now. 
Sadly, unlike the conventional Linux Live CD, there's no system install app in the live environment. I had to reboot again to go to the installation. The installer booted into a retro looking but intuitive partition page. I was able to choose the correct disk and format. I chose ext4 after that. From the beginning of the installation to the first time boot up, it took me around 4 minutes and 45 seconds overall. Unfortunately, the HDMI didn't work, so you have to bear with my phone's recording for this one. After entering the system, it gave me the same initial setup process just like the one in the live CD. Everything felt super snappy. I was able to use my keyboard and mouse, connect to Wi-Fi, and browse the internet. The touchpad on my laptop worked, but the conventional desktop gestures like two fingers scrolling were not working. And there was no touch screen on my laptop, so I couldn't test other gestures. Other things I noticed were, the laptop was a bit noisy under light load. And it felt hot on the surface when idle. I bet it doesn't have the NVIDIA proprietary driver, which makes sense, as there's no reason for Google to put it in the Android kernel in the first place, and the Prime OS developers might only enable Novo inside this kernel. The biggest issue I found is that the browser froze after opening for 30 seconds. I can reproduce it 100% of the time, so let's see if it will be the same for games. I can't seem to sign in to Google Play Store here. It kept saying my password was wrong. And given it was an older Android version, which I don't know how safe it could be, I ditched the idea of using Play Store. Instead, I downloaded the F Droid from the browser. Funny thing was, the browser froze right before the app finished downloading. With F Droid, I installed the Pixel Dungeon game recommended by people on Reddit. I played it for 5 minutes, which didn't crash. Then I wanted to test if other browsers would. But surprisingly, F Droid doesn't contain any web browsers. And when I tried to use the PKG package manager in the terminal to search for a browser, the system crashed. Sadly, it happened too fast before I turned on my recording. But I remember I had only three programs running. Browser, GeoGames, and Terminal. So I'm not sure how optimized the system is if you want to game. After the system turned itself back up, I searched for the browser again using PKG but can't find any regular ones, so I decided to stop my journey on Prime OS. My experience is that Android is still not yet ready to be run on any modern bare metal laptops. To me, they have issue of installation, stability, and usability. I don't have any alternatives to suggest because even though Chrome OS Flex has an overall better experience, it doesn't support Android apps, which means if you want to play Android games, get an Android device. However, this is just my experience with my specific laptop. Let me know in the comment below about yours. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.